Coming up, the Orioles and Giants pitch their way to wins. This is Locked On Game to Game, MLB. Every game, every team, every angle. Locked On Game to Game, your team every day. Welcome in. You're listening to Locked On Game to Game MLB. Local experts join us to go over the games from yesterday across Major League Baseball. I'm your host, Kainani Stevens. Thank you for making Locked On your first listen every single weekday. After the Marlins scored four runs in the top of the ninth to tie the game, Ezekiel Tavar provided the game-winning single to save the Rockies in the bottom of the ninth. Locked On Rockies goes over a frantic finish in Colorado. Rock on Rockies fans, Paul Alden here from the Locked on Rockies podcast. The Rockies win a series against the Miami Marlins, but absolute near disaster, potential disaster still in the series finale. The Rockies blow a four-run lead to the Marlins, giving up two two two-run home runs in the top of the ninth. Brenton Doyle goes down with a scary-looking injury, but some optimism from Bud Black that he might miss the IL. The young Rockies rookie phenom center fielder trying to rob one of those home runs, a Another two-run home run ties the game up, but thanks to some bad bullpen pitching from the Marlins, some good discipline at the dish, the Rockies are able to score tacos and a win and series win against the Miami Marlins. What's next for the Rockies? Oh, just Justin Verlander and Max Scherzer. Let's see how they handle Coors Field. We'll be breaking it all down right here on Locked on Rockies. Roughnet Odor provided the late-game heroics for the Padres yesterday, hitting a three-run home run to take San Diego from down two runs to a win in Washington. Locked on Padres recaps the come-from-behind victory in D.C. Just pure chaos. Ladies and gentlemen, what's up? Javier Reyes here with the Lockdown Padres podcast. The Padres win this last game of this national series by a score of 8-6. to six. And as a result, their first series win, I think of May or early May, something like that. So that was really cool. Thanks to Brunette Odor, a player that has... Full disclosure, not been one of my favorites over the course of the last several years. Uh, huge home run, top of ninth, two outs to put the Potters up 8-6 after an implosion by the bullpen, after a weird bunt attempt by Trent Grisham that made no sense. Just weird stuff throughout, uh, a poor strikeout from Nelson all sorts of things. Uh, a good start from Blake Snell, by the way, is worth pointing out. That was nice, but a really chaotic game because also, unfortunately, Hassan Kim uh, had to be carried off the field, so that wasn't great. Um, so while this is really nice and worth celebrating a series win against you know a not a great team in the nationals can't get too carried away but it was still really cool just for what i think a lot of padres fans has felt that situation first and second nobody out even at the end of the game with this lineup so many times this year the padres haven't come up with an rbi and of all people runed odor baseball is so damn weird man let me tell you The Giants used six combined pitchers to shut out the Brewers yesterday in Milwaukee, and our Locked on Giants host goes over all of the names that you need to know after the win. There's always a little bit of moaning and groaning when the Giants go with a bullpen game, and I get it, I get it. But hey, in the last two bullpen games by the Giants, uh, two of them in their last four games, they've allowed a total of one run in 18 innings, and obviously they've won both of those games. This is Ben Caspic with the Locked on Giants podcast tonight against the Brewers. Coming off a miserable loss for the Giants, Scott Alexander, Taylor Rogers, Jacob Junis, Sean Manaya, Tyler Rogers, and John Brebbia combined to shut out the Milwaukee Brewers as the Giants win 5 to nothing. get back to 500. Just a big win coming off a tough loss when the team was otherwise playing well before that tough loss. Michael Conforto stayed red hot. Casey Schmidt had a couple of hits, including a big late double. Pat Bailey got in on the action. Lamont Wade Jr. So just great all-around win for the Giants in a bullpen game. Yes, indeed. So we'll break it down tomorrow on Locked on Giants, where it's your team every day. Coming up, Kyle Gibson shuts down the Yankees. This is Locked On Game to Game, MLB. Today's edition of Game to Game is brought to you by eBay Motors. A championship team is about each player being a perfect fit. Same thing goes for your vehicle. So parts that fit are very important. Head to eBay Motors and look for that green check. Stay in the game with eBay Guaranteed Fit. eBayMotors.com. Let's ride. eBay Guarantee Fit only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only and exclusions do apply. Welcome back. You're listening to Locked On Game to Game MLB. I'm your host, Kainani Stevens. The Reds and Cardinals went scoreless into the eighth inning yesterday when St. Louis scored two runs, which were just enough to get a win in Cincinnati. Locked On Reds recaps the pitcher's duel. 
you just cannot come up empty that many times with runners in scoring position and expect to win. What's up? This is Jeff Carr from the Locked On Reds podcast. And the Cincinnati Reds had a shot. They could have won this series and won the game on Thursday and and take three of four from the Cardinals, but the middle of the order just did not want to hit the ball for some reason today. You had Matt McClain getting on base. You had TJ Friedel. TJ Friedel was on base four times. Never scored. That's that is so frustrating. This game and make you tear your hat. I, I really wanted the Reds to split this series. They did that, but it feels like they should have won the series now, and it almost feels like that was a bummer. Now the Reds head to Chicago. I, they wasted a great pitching performance from Luke Weaver. And we got a lot to talk about on the next Locked On Reds. Make sure you join us. The Tigers beat the White Sox yesterday to keep pace with the Twins in the AL Central. Chicago fell back down to six games back of Detroit. And Locked On White Sox has more after the Southsiders loss. The Chicago White Sox lost to the Detroit Tigers 7-2 to in Detroit on Thursday. Hey, I'm Nick Morawski from Locked On White Sox. It looked like the White Sox were turning a corner after winning a series against the Cleveland Guardians, playing some better baseball. Uh, but then Thursday happened. White Sox starter Lucas Giolito couldn't even get out of the fourth inning, uh, a start that he would like to forget immediately. Gave up seven walks. White Sox pitching issued 11 free passes to the Tigers. Sox offense with only four hits, a home run from Gavin Sheets. Sox look to do so much better on Friday with Lance Lynn on the mound. For more, check out the Lockdown White Sox podcast. Kyle Gibson single-handedly shut down the Yankees lineup on Thursday. He gave up just two hits in seven innings to set the Orioles up for a series win in the Bronx. Locked on hosts with both sides. Take us through the matchup. Start spreading the news. Duh! Yankees lose. Orioles take the series in the Bronx five out of six on a road trip in Toronto and New York. The Orioles were one pitch away from sweeping a six-game road trip over those two teams. This team is different. I mean, in the ways they win to have the comeback, the big eight-run inning on Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, Kyle Gibson just dominating the Yankee order. Two hits in seven scoreless innings. Are you kidding me? And then... Austin Hayes with big hit, Santander and Gunnar Henderson with big games, and you give yourself a little bit of cushion where, yeah, Yinyer Cano does have his worst outing of the year, but he still gets the save, and the Orioles win it 3-1 to to take the series. It is going to be fun at the yard this weekend, but I'll be recapping Thursday's win coming up on Friday's episode of the Locked On Orioles podcast. This is Stacey Gotsoulias of Locked On Yankees, and the Yankees drop the final game of the series, 3-1 to the Baltimore Orioles, and they lose the series, two out of three. The series was going so well for the first game in seven innings, and then, or no, six innings, and then the seventh inning, everything went to heck on Wednesday. And on Thursday, the Yankees offense just couldn't get anything going against Kyle Gibson. Kyle Gibson pitched seven innings, gave up two hits, no runs, walked four, struck out three, and the Yankees couldn't do anything. Clark Schmidt, five innings, one run, five hits, two walks, four strikeouts, one of his better outings of the year, and the offense did nothing to help him out. Now, the other big story of the game, Aaron Boone getting ejected again. Second time in two weeks, fourth time all season. He might be going for a new record. He led baseball last year with nine ejections. He's almost halfway there. We'll see if he gets there. With the way things are going, he might get there. So we have everything you need to know about this game on the next Locked On Yankees. And we cross over with Javi from Locked On Padres because the Yankees are welcoming the Padres to town. So it should be a good one. Please tune in. That's a wrap for this edition of Locked On Game to Game MLB. We thank you for making Locked On your first listen every single weekday. Make sure you're subscribed to Locked On MLB and your favorite team's Locked On podcast on YouTube and wherever else you get your podcasts from. I'm Kainani Stevens. This has been Locked On Game to Game.